Hey everyone, DCB here again with yet another McRestoration. I don't know, do you guys like these or should I do something different for a while? Let me know in the comments. Anyway, last video we restored that rare 1972 Alfred Gordon Studios Ronald McDonald wall hanging. And that was pretty cool. But now here's something even better. Check this out. It's the whole rest of the McDonald Land gang in one giant amazing fiberglass masterpiece. This thing is insane and insanely rare. Like the Ronald, they were also only made for one year because the Alfred Gordon studio lost the McDonald's contract shortly after and then set makers took over and the style of the gang just really started to drastically change after that. This comes from the same collection as the Ronald we did earlier and has the same sort of issues with him as well meaning lots of paint loss and missing chunks of fiberglass and you know various other issues but now that we have a better idea of what we're dealing with i think we're a bit more comfortable tackling this project it can be a bit overwhelming though because this stuff is like priceless fine art to me but it'll be fine so yeah once again let's go out in the shop and see what we can do Just like the Ronald McDonald we did, there was a lot of paint loss on this piece, but still enough left on it that we have to remove it down to the base to get a good smooth surface to work off of. And once again, we're gonna use citrus strip for that. We're just liberally slapping it on and spreading it all over. Once it's been on there for a few hours, we'll bring it to the car wash and spray it down. I was a little concerned that the pressure would rip off chunks of fiberglass since there were so many broken sections, but it seemed to hold up just fine. Back to the shop for a little bit more citrus strip on some of the deeper bits that didn't quite come off, and then again to the car wash. That all seemed to do the trick just fine. The wood bracket on back was also rotted away like the Ronald, so a new one was fabricated and we glued it on with E6000. as well as adding some JB Weld epoxy putty around the edges for extra support. This piece actually has more missing chunks than the Ronald did, and a lot of exposed fiberglass fibers. I don't think the Alfred Gordon company was very good at fiberglass layup, as there were a lot of air pockets between the gel coat and the glass that easily broke out over time. But we're going to fill these up with epoxy sculpt. Again, this is a two-part putty that cures rock hard overnight. Most of the areas needing repair are pretty easy to figure out. But the captain's skull on his hat was completely missing. I don't have very good reference photos for this, but based on the rest of the sculpting style of this piece, I'm guessing it's a pretty simple and crude looking skull, and that's easy enough to replicate. Big Mac was missing an entire half of his leg, but I think we did a pretty good representation of what it looked like. Now that all the major damage has been patched, it's time to give it a base coat of automotive primer. This serves two purposes. One is to give it a good solid base for the paint to stick to, and two is to help us see what areas may need some additional patching and repair. We patched the smaller holes with some glazing putty and then gave it another layer of primer. Afterwards, we painted the entire thing with a base coat of Duplicolor white automotive paint that we got from the auto store. Everything will be brush painted except for the two burger heads. We want these to have a toasted bun look to them. We actually had some custom tinted high grade automotive paint left over from another Merrimack Cheese project we did a few months back, so that was good. We start with painting the entire buns a nice bright yellow color. Then we'll come in carefully and add a more orangey brown color over that, making sure to leave the yellow exposed close to the edges of their mouth. It really gives it a great look. Big Mac has about 
27 and a half million sesame seeds on his bun, so we tediously painted each one with rust-oleum in an almond color. Of course we had to go back and fill in any white areas that got sprayed with the bun color, most notably around their eyes and Hamburglar's suit. Big Mac's whistle, badge, buttons, and belt buckle, as well as the mayor's glasses, all get a coat of silver paint. For Hamburglar and the captain's skin, we had some leftover paint we custom mixed for a larger captain piece we did earlier. It was a mix of white, red, green, and black. It was kind of a pain to get just right, so I'm glad we still had some of that left over. There is a lot of yellow on this piece, and for that we're using the same sunburst yellow we used for Ronald's suit. The inside of Hamburglar's cape is a more orangish yellow, so we made a custom mix for that. Big Mac's outfit is royal blue and Hamburglar's tie is red. Both of these colors we just took right out of the can. Next was Hamburglar's hat, mask, and black stripes. And the stripe on Big Mac's hat as well as his belt and boots. For the smaller details, like the mare's blue eyes and the veggies in Big Mac's mouth, we just used spray paint squirted into cups. For the hamburger meat, we use leather brown. I tend to go a little light and do not do a second coat when I paint the meat on these projects because I like how it looks having some of the yellow coming through. It just gives it a nice multi-toned look to it. Now with the eyes dry, it's time to freehand on the black pupils. Grimace was another custom paint mix of red and blue to get a nice dark purple. Notice that he's the very early forearmed evil version. There were of course many other areas we custom mixed paint for, but you kind of get the idea. The one trickier part though were the mare's pant stripes. The sculpting had no indication on where these go, so I had to look at reference pictures and do my best to pencil in guidelines to follow. And as always, once we're done painting, we top everything off with a nice thick glossy layer of automotive clear coat to tie it all together and protect it for years to come. And here's Tom, one of our best clients, seeing his piece for the first time. <laughs> Oh my god, that's great. I love this. That is amazing. That didn't look that good new. It might look that good new, so no, but that's amazing. Wow. That was exactly what I wanted. That looks amazing. Thanks everyone for watching. Be sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at sugar underbar frosted or Dustin Crops Boy. Weird.